Steve Kilby, pop singer, pinnated, arty, lefty. I'm a vegetarian, I'm anti-war, peace-loving. It's got an opinion on everything. One of those, and I smoke dough. I love music and art, arty, lefty. I'm a vegetarian and all that stuff. So if you want to stick around and hear what I have to say on all of these subjects, Second best Australian band. Yeah. Other than you saying the church is the best. <laughs> um, a band I like right across the board, I like all their records, is the Underground Lovers, um, who I first got to. I was in LA um, in the 90s, and a friend of mine who was some hip young Turk at a record company. He and I got really stoned, smoking in these glass pipettes. He had this premium quality and got really stoned. And he said, I'm going to play some records to you. And he played me a bunch of records. And I was going, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he put this one record on and I went, right, leave this one on. And I listened to a whole bunch of it. I went, fuck, who is that? I felt like, wow, whoever's done that's just, just about put me out of business because it's, it's incredible. And he said, oh, it's an Australian band, the Underground Lovers. Have you heard of them? And I went, yeah, I heard of them, but I, I thought they were sort of a baggy. I think their very first record, the one I haven't heard much of, is kind of baggy. It's sort of like, and I didn't like baggy, as like Stone Roses, baggy, sort of like, eh, that kind of, that sort of thing. And then suddenly on this second record that got an American release on a very hip rec label, they suddenly turned into the underground lovers as uh, sort of as I know and love them now. And every song was um, quite incredible. And uh, ever since then, um, I've always liked the underground lovers and even their latest record is a, it's a brilliant record. It's like as good as any of the others. They're all good. And um, they're a brilliant band. They are, their music, their lyrics. They have a totally unique sound. I uh, uh, made two albums, or worked on two albums with Glenn Benny, uh, who's the sort of the guitarist and the kind of the musical guy in, in, in the band. And he has a completely unique style, a completely unique take. He tunes it differently, he plays it differently. As soon as he starts playing, he's just got his own sound. Um, and I think he's amazing. I think and Vince, the singer, writes amazing lyrics. Um, yeah, so they're definitely my second favourite Australian band. I do not have a best song in my universe. There is no best song. When I hit, when when you when you said that best song, all these names began to shout out, and then when I tried to listen to them all, it was all replaced by a silence of going. There's no best song. There is no best song in my in my world. It from day to day, and even now, I, I, even now, nothing really. I mean, I could say, as I said at this thing, "Strawberry Fields Forever." It certainly is one of the best songs. And today, I could say, okay, that's the best song ever written, in my opinion. I can I can go with that. "Strawberry Fields Forever," just incredible, beautiful, groundbreaking, uh, across in in every way, an absolute breakthrough for music, a new angle. A new way of singing, a new sound, a new... I was explaining this the other day on this show I was on called The Story So Far. Pop music had had singers and the singers were singing like, I love you, or they're going, I'm sad girl, or they're going, I'm angry. But never we have a guy sort of with his granny glasses on sort of going, I'm distant, I'm... I'm I'm sort of discombobulated from all this. I'm kind of, I'm sort of slightly paranoid and slightly frightened and sort of slightly, I'm sort of going through something strange. I, hang on a minute, no, oh yes I am. Oh wait a minute, oh. And sort of like, we've never had anybody do that. Um, we've never had someone using the platform of a pop or rock song to make this sort of a statement about detachment and disorientation and um, a feeling of just that and just the way it comes across and the sound of his voice it sounds like he's coming from a million miles away 
million miles away from wherever you are all at, all you people, is not where John Lennon's at. And his and the way that music and the way that sound of his voice, that telephone voice, a small it's no long gone is the John Lennon of and when I touch you suddenly all of that confidence that male bravado has gone and now he's like a he's like a small part of him is talking to you from a great haze and a great distance a great confusion and yet sort of an illumination so suddenly you want to feel like that too you want that kind of detachment um, and then, and as I said, the music, the, the stuff the cellos are doing, George's guitar, um, the backwards stuff, like the thing that goes, I cranberry sauce or I buried Paul, and um, all, this, all the sort of the, the key changes and tempo changes, the way it was physically put together. It's like the, the one song you could take a million musicians and they could study that song, a million pop musicians, study that song for the rest of their life, write articles and analyze it and think about it and still no one would sort of, still no one could get to the bottom of, of, of its, of, what you've got to remember is, before that song, so one day you, one day, there's, there's no one's ever heard a song like that before, and one day you're somewhere and you're 11 or 12, what would I have been 12 when that came out? Maybe on the verge of 13. Between 12 and 13, I'm somewhere, probably driving along with my father. Suddenly this song comes on the radio. And you've never heard a song like that before. It's shocking. It's like, it's something else again. It's like, sort of like, um, to a sensitive person like me who's looking for this stuff, who's sort of interested in magic and sort of interest in sort of different states of consciousness and all this to hear a song like that it's like a shock to the system it's like something so it's like the indians in america seeing columbus on the horizon it's almost so brilliant that you can't and so um out of your normal black and white existence this kind of message from another kind of you know all the adults you know like come on steve and eat up drink your baked beans and you put airs on your chest and one day you can fight in the war, you know. And then suddenly there's a guy going, oh, I'm a long way away and I'm, I'm confused and, and fucking everything's weird up here. You know, I don't know what's going on. Suddenly that's like a whole, you know, I'd never, and put, put, but of course it's because it's put to music. Anyone can say all that stuff, but, but put to music so convincingly. It's like a, um, that, that, that one song is like a, the birth of a whole fucking, a whole thing, a whole, em a whole universe of thought contained within that one song uh, across every level of it, the recording of it, the singing of it, the writing of it, the, everything about it is, is kind of, is fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm.